Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from May-June 2023, paper 1. And today's lesson, we will focus on questions from waves. As always we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of waves topic and also you can have better understanding of these questions. Let's study together. Let's improve together. Question 20 says, a progressive wave of frequency 1.5 kHz travels in a medium at a speed of 340 meters per second. What is the minimum distance between two points on the wave that have a phase difference of 70 degrees? So in this case, phase difference is given to us and we need to find the distance between two points. In order to find the distance between two points, we need to understand the ratio between the phase difference phase difference so we can write on phase difference divided by 360 degrees this is equal to the path difference divided by the wavelength of the wave path difference divided by wavelength so simply we can say this is wavelength so this is the main concept you need to understand so in this case we need to find out the distance mean we need to find out the path difference between two points so we can rearrange this one so we can write down in this case path difference this will be equal to phase difference phase difference divided by 360 degrees multiply by wavelength lambda so if we have value of lambda we can figure out part difference mean we can find the distance between two points on the wave so phase difference in this case is given to us that is 70 degrees so this is 70 degrees so you have to use this one also in degrees if this is in radian you can also use this one in radians so here we have 360 degrees multiplied by wavelength so we need value of lambda and so if we have value of lambda we can simply plug in and we can find the distance between two points so first of all we need to find out value of lambda we have frequency of the wave we have speed of the wave in that medium so we can say lambda in this case this will be equal to v divided by f so value of v we have that is 340 meters per second and frequency is 1.5 kilohertz so this is 1.5 times 10 to 3 if we solve this one our answer will be equal to 0.226 meters so this is value of lambda now simply you have to plug in this value here so we have 0.226 meters so if we solve this one our final answer should be 4.4 times 10 to minus 2 meters so these answers are given in centimeters so we can simply write down this is equal to 4.4 centimeters so the answer for this question is a so the main concept let me highlight again this is the main concept you need to understand the ratio between phase difference and 360 is equal to part difference divided by wavelength so this is the main concept very important concept try to remember or try to understand this question 21 says graph 1 shows the variation with time of displacement at a fixed distance along a progressive wave it simply means that if you're looking at one point at a certain distance we will see how the displacement is changing with time so this is given in graph 1 Graph 2 represents the same wave and shows the variation with distance of displacement at an instant in time. Mean at certain time we will see with distance how the displacement is changing and this is given in graph 2. So these are the meaning so you need to try to imagine that. For this question simply we need to find the speed of the wave so from this graph we have time on x-axis so we can find the time period so in this case time period we can write down time period will be equal to 0.40 seconds and from this graph we can find out 
wavelength because we have distance on x axis so we can write down here lambda this is equal to 120 centimeters we need to find out the speed v v is equal to f times lambda so you can write on v is equal to f times lambda but frequency is equal to 1 over t so we can say this is 1 over t so this is the time period means time taken to complete one cycle and lambda is the distance traveled by a wave in one time period so simply we have distance divided by time taken so we have value of lambda that is equal to 120 centimeters we no need to convert into meters because all answers are given in centimeters divided by time period that is equal to 0 0.40 seconds now simply we need to solve this one this is 0 0.40 seconds if we solve our final answer will be equal to 300 centimeters per second quite straightforward question so the answer for this question is d what is wavelength wavelength is the distance traveled by a wave in one time period question 22 says a vehicle moves with constant velocity along a road directly towards an observer the observed frequency of the sound from the vehicle changes as the vehicle moves past the observer which phenomenon explains the change in frequency this change in frequency is due to relative motion between source and observer relative motion between source and observer and this phenomenon we call is doppler effect so this is doppler effect the apparent change in frequency so this is doppler effect doppler effect so this phenomenon is called doppler effect so then so far this one is simply d due to relative motion the frequency we will hear that is not the frequency which is produced by the source so this apparent change in frequency is due to relative motion and this phenomenon is doppler effect question 23 says an electromagnetic wave has a wavelength of 2.1 centimeters in a vacuum which region of the electromagnetic spectrum contains this wave so the wavelength we have that is equal to 2.1 centimeters and if you look at the wavelength of microwaves lambda of microwaves that is from one millimeter to 30 centimeters and lambda of radio waves this is very important to remember this one and lambda of radio waves is from 30 centimeters to 100 kilometers so these two ranges are very important so this is 2.1 centimeters so it means this is the microwave so this is microwave question 24 says a source of plane polarized light is observed through two polarizing filters the filters are positioned so that the source appears at its brightest one of the filters is then rotated clockwise and the other filter is rotated anti-clockwise through the same angle means both filters have been rotated through the same angle how does the source appear when both filters have been rotated 90 degrees and 180 degrees from their initial positions we have plain polarized light so we have source of polarized light now we need to understand is it vertically polarized or is it horizontally polarized light to understand this point we have to look at these polarizing filters so we have one polarizing filter here and the other polarizing filter we have here and in this case it is the brightest I mean just light passes through these filters it simply means that we have vertically polarized light so this is vertically polarized light so this is one thing we can understand about this polarized light so we have vertically polarized light now the second thing we need to understand it is given to us that one filter is rotated anti-clockwise and one is rotated clockwise so this filter is rotated anti-clockwise by 90 degrees so we can again draw this filter here and we can rotate this one by 90 degrees so by 90 degree if we rotate it will appear like this so this is it will appear like this so we have rotated this one 90 so we rotate like this and the second filter 
it is also rotated by 90 degrees and this is rotated clockwise so we can rotate this one clockwise by 90 degrees so this will appear like this so in this case you can see this filter is horizontal to this one angle between them is 90 degrees so no part of this light will pass through this one you can also understand this with the help of Mel's law means i transmitted this one will be equal to i naught cosine square theta theta is the angle between polarized light and this transmission axis if angle is 90 degrees so if cosine of 90 degrees square of this one so it has to be equal to zero so it means this one will be the darkest so we can say darkest no light will pass through these filters so this is the first case so answer can be c or answer can be d a is not possible b is not possible c or d these are two possible options now let's look at the second case for the second case it is given to us we rotate this one by 180 degrees means we rotate this one like this so this is rotated by 180 degrees so you can see here and this is rotated by 180 degrees clockwise so first we rotate this one by 90 degrees then again we rotate this one by 90 degrees so you can see this is here so it means in this case light will pass through this because the angle is zero degrees so we can also write down here angle between this vertically polarized light and transmission axis zero degrees it means cosine of zero is maximum so we can write on it this one has to be equal to i naught intensity of this one we are assuming is i naught uh, here we are saying is it and this will be equal to cosine of zero degrees square so if we solve this one we will get it this is equal to i naught so it means in this case this one will be the brightest brightest so then so far this question darkest brightest so the answer is c so this is how you can figure out so two main problems student they face when they look at this type of problem first thing they will ignore that it is given to us plain polarized light this is one problem student will face then the second problem is that they will have difficulty to find out is it vertically polarized is it horizontally polarized to find out that one we need to understand it is given to us initially it is the brightest it means this light is vertically polarized so if you have understanding of these points questions about polarizations are not difficult if you have clear understanding of this question i hope this one is clear to you and if you have any questions please leave your questions in comments and i will try to answer as soon as possible